Malcolm Gladwell is one of the foremost Canadian public intellectuals of our time. A staff writer at The New Yorker since 1996, he's made a virtual industry out of overturning the assumptions that shape our everyday lives. In his best-selling books, The Tipping Point, Blink, Outliers, and What the Dog Saw, Gladwell offers fresh insight into how we relate to other people, how social movements gain momentum or don't, and how we make decisions. In April 2010, Mr. Gladwell was in Vancouver to talk about innovation and the new challenges posed by new media. I'm BC Business Digital Editor John Booker, and I had the chance to speak on the phone with Mr. Gladwell. I began by asking him how he defines that slippery term, innovation. That's a really good question. I don't really know if I have a simple answer. I guess it just would be the willingness to disrupt um, the normal way of doing things. I think it's as simple as that. I mean, I think it all starts with a with a kind of a mind, you know, a mindset. A kind of you have to want to change things um, if you're going to change them. Seems uh, drawing from some of your writing that uh, you have a slightly different approach than what might be in the norm in terms of innovation. Well, it's funny. I'm writing a long piece right now about it looks at serendipity. Mm-hmm. You know, so much of what is truly interesting in innovation happens not entirely by accident, but that at some point along the way, there things took a serendipitous turn. And the people, the innovator, has to be willing to kind of exploit that unexpected turn. And not everyone can. Sometimes people are so sort of focused on the particular path that they're on that they're not open to finding out that oh, wait a minute, you know, there's a whole new universe out here that I hadn't imagined. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's what this piece I'm running now is about, what it means to kind of throw yourself in the way of fortune, you know, to kind of be willing to kind of go wherever you, wherever your, um, this sort of serendipitous journey takes you. Mm-hmm. And I'm impressed by, it takes a lot of courage to do that. Um, Why? Well, you know, if you think about, you know, the classic example of Columbus stumbles across North America, and he, you know, if you read the story of Columbus, he has a lot of trouble at the beginning accepting his discovery, um, accepting its importance, accepting, he says he's disappointed. He's looking for the Indies, and he, he finds something else entirely. It takes a certain amount of courage to abandon the path that you had and to say, actually, I'm now doing something very different. In uh, your 2002 article, Group Think, and when you're speaking about Darwin and, and something called philosophical laughing, which is quite a nice idea. Yeah. You said uh, losing sight of what you truly believed when the meeting began is one way of uh, defining it. Um, can innovation disillusion? No, I mean, well, I'm really interested in how people respond to failure. When you start edging out into the fringes of what, what is known, you start getting into areas where you, you have no choice but to engage in kind of trial and error. Mm-hmm. And you have to be willing to accept the, po- the very real possibility that you will, that failure is inevitable and that you won't know why you failed. And that, again, takes an extraordinary amount of courage. You know, like the kind of, um, like I'm writing about this, a tech company that is working on a cancer drug mm-hmm. uh, that ultimately failed. And they knew when they started out that their chances of failure were overwhelming and that if they failed, they may well have no clue as to why. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet they did it anyway. And I find that to be a really extraordinary and, um, again, courageous act. Because it may all well be futile in the end? or Yeah, because to do things that, in the full knowledge that they may well be futile in the end, is to me one of the defining features of an innovative um, culture or an innovative organization. <laughs> um, I mean, this is a very counterintuitive uh, idea. I don't, I don't think so. I, no? mean, I, think, I think the great, if you look at, exi- at case studies of really successful innovations, they are uh, in so many cases preceded by failure upon failure upon failure. Mm-hmm. And that's what set the reason that particular person or individual triumphed is that they were they they were willing to kind of um, fight work through that. The kind of you know the kinds of problems that we face in our present day are not are insanely complicated and they cannot be solved the first time out. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and I, we have to instill, I think, that kind of expectation to people that, to, you know, to VCs who are funding things, to you can't get your money out in three years. You have to be willing to kind of back someone and, you know, through all the failures. For you know, the innovative organizations, are, you know, they're always looking to disrupt mm-hmm. what they're what they're what they're doing. It's never they never feel like they have solved the problem in front of them. Is innovation linear? No. Um, in fact. 
one of the things I think sometimes it creates as many problems as it solves. Do you regard yourself as an optimist? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty optimistic. It's hard to be a writer and be a pessimist because, <laughs> you know, uh, why would you invest all kinds of time and energy and imagination in a project if all you are going to do is is to be the bearer of bad news? I mean, it's sort of hard to keep going. Right. I mean, I'm just trying to prompt people to kind of re-examine their experience mm-hmm. in some way. I think that is a very noble goal in and of itself. I don't know whether I have a kind of larger goal beyond that. Now, you've spoken on the idea of Canadian identity before. Can we innovate differently from Americans? Or is there a particularly Canadian quality to some kinds of innovation? Innovation styles grow out of your kind of cultural heritage. And I've always been a big believer in, like like many Canadians, in the fact that our cultural heritage is dramatically different from that of our neighbor. And if I have a criticism of the current government, or I sort of think the goal of Canadian national policy ought to be to accentuate Canada's differences with its neighbor. Mm-hmm. Um, and not blur them. Right. And that if all Canada is trying to be is a smaller version of the United States, it has no chance to compete. Right. Right. But if Canada is trying to do something profoundly different, create a very different kind of society, then I think we have enormous advantages. You know, small countries, you look around the world now, there are plenty of examples of small countries that are insanely innovative. I mean, Israel is a beautiful example. This is clearly the most innovative place on earth right now. And it's a tiny place. They have a very, very distinctive and useful culture. And that distinctiveness is what gives them this incredible advantage against their much larger counterparts. Mm -hmm. And Canada ought to look at that and say, uh, we ought to be as different as we can from our neighbors and trading partners. And how would we accentuate that as Canadians? Well, I mean, one very simple thing is one of the ways in which Canada differs from America is that it is a um, a place of much... uh, smaller income inequality. Mm -hmm. It's a much more equal society socially and economically. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole argument to be made that certain kinds of innovations come most naturally from places where there is a great degree of of economic and social equality. Mm -hmm. Canada should be aggressively pursuing policies to accentuate that equality. Mm -hmm. Because America's going in exactly the opposite direction. Um, America is closing its borders. Canada has a chance, I think, to aggressively open them even mm-hmm. further and say we're open to every bright young mind around the world. Uh, you know, I could go on. But America's going in one direction, Canada to go in the other. I'm BC Business Digital Editor John Booker, and that was me in conversation with the journalist and author Malcolm Gladwell. For more from Mr. Gladwell, visit his blog at gladwell.com. And for more on technology and innovation in BC, visit bcbusinessonline.ca slash 2010 slash innovation.